and uh, and the last part will be the application deployment how you can share your code with your colleagues inside your industry inside your company so the last part will be the application deployment using the MATLAB compiler if you have any questions during the uh, this session just feel free to ask whether it is related hardly to the uh, presentation or not it's it's not a problem so we will deal with uh, with first we will deal with MATLAB and memory how you can pass arrays how MATLAB passes arrays inside functions how you can use functions what is a function inside MATLAB then what kind of functions can you find and you use inside MATLAB perhaps you know it and uh, as the last part of this session will be how you can use nested functions inside MATLAB if you want to use for a graphical to create a graphical user interface and as as following this graphical user interface part we can discuss how you can use uh, this custom user interface to build your own application how you can use compiler to make your own application so the first first question is who is using currently MATLAB or have you ever used MATLAB hands up please okay so most of you use MATLAB okay so it's nothing new to you okay excellent so we will start with a very simple function do you use functions do you create functions inside MATLAB okay and so here you can see you can see a simple or regular function perhaps you you are familiar with this one you start here Here, so on the left hand side you start with the name with the keyword function it is it is restricted inside MATLAB like several f uh, keywords inside MATLAB and on the left hand side of the equation you can indicate all the outputs that will be displayed inside your script since 2014a you can call functions without inputs or without outputs so in some cases you don't want to use any inputs or any outputs it's not a problem here you can see a valid uh, syntax how you can create a function inside MATLAB on the right hand side you have one and only output this is why it must be indicated it must be written somewhere inside your script so it's one restriction inside the function and on the right hand side you can see the name of the function which is foo and in the parentheses you can see the inputs you can have unlimited number of inputs here you can see that this function accepts and waits for three different inputs it waits for x a and b uh, okay so why is it important to use functions for example if you can write a simple script it's no problem inside MATLAB and you can call a script from another script it's allowed it's no problem but what is dangerous in this method in this algorithm that you call a script from another script so what is the most what is the main advantage of using functions instead of scripts what happens with the workspace sorry yeah you can and uh, is MATLAB warn you when it overwrites variables So let's say you want to so let's say you want to enter here I have the workspace hidden to have more space for the command window and for the editor so let's say I want a variable named x which is 4 so let's repeat again and let's say I want to use the same name for the variable x but I want to assign a value of 6 instead of 4 will MATLAB warn me that it will overwrite no of course MATLAB will never warn so now it's 6 in the workspace so this is dangerous inside uh, calling scripts from another script that MATLAB never warns that it overwrites variables in the workspace so they share the same workspace if you write a script they share the same workspace but with the functions they 
allocate their own workspaces so you cannot override them. So that's the most, that's the biggest advantage of using functions inside of uh, scripts. So if you create functions, it will use their own workspaces so you cannot override. And inside this workspace, you can share data between them with simple functions like this one, this regular function, and uh, later we will uh, see and look into nested functions and anonymous functions. So here, this simple function accepts three inputs, x, a, and b, and it will calculate uh, y, which will be a times x plus b. So when we enter this function, how many so we enter x, a, and b, the same way like it is depicted here. So we have x, a, and b. Okay, sorry, I need to make it bigger. I just want to make the fonts look bigger because it's too small. Okay. Okay, so so we have the variables x, a, and b inside my workspace. So x is a vector, it contains three elements, one, two, and three. A is a scalar value, b is a scalar value, and I can call this function with these three inputs. So if we open up this function, Okay, we can look into this one. Okay. So we have this function here, so it accepts three inputs and it will calculate y regarding that it will, it will be a times x plus b. So if we call this function with these three inputs, x, a, and b, we can, we can see what happens. Okay, so do you use uh, breakpoints inside your script? Okay, so if you click on this line in the beginning of your code, you can set breakpoints inside your code and you can use it in debug mode so you can uh, look after lazy parts of your code and where it, uh, where it slows down so you can examine uh, your code from line to line or you can uh, chop your script, your whole script into several sections. Okay, so let's start with this breakpoint setting. So if I call this function with x, a and b, so we have these variables in our workspace Okay, oh, I forgot to add this library, sorry, to the path. Okay. Okay, so it executes the whole script from the first line. So, as you can see in the command window, we have capital K, so MATLAB switched to keyboard mode. This means that it's in a debug mode. So this little sign changes whether you are in a debugging mode or in a normal mode. So it stops at the fifth line, so you can always check that what happens inside your function. So this is the function, it, it contains its own workspace, so you can, if you go to the workspace, you can see that A is 2. So this variable here in the workspace is different what you can write and what you can see inside the function. So that's the main advantage that you can have the same variable here and you cannot overwrite with the variable A uh, from the outer workspace. So we can go to the next one, to the next step. So now we in the sixth line, so Y will be calculated as a times x plus b, so we have the same we have the same three variables, a, b and x. x, x uh, is the same as the same input, b is the same as the input variable as 
uh, set to 4 and inside the function we calculated a which is a1 which, which was 2 plus 12 so now a is 14 and if we execute the last line of the code it will calculate y okay so now we have the output variable y which is a times x plus b so x had uh, three values, one, two, and three, and now y has three, three values, so it is a vector value again. And we finished the function, so the function is executed, so now the value of a is written back to the original value, which was two. So inside the function, it handles its own workspace, it handles its own memory, so it is different what you can see inside the function, what happens outside the function in the in the workspace. So every function allocates their own workspace and you cannot use, and it's, it's, it is the most advantageous way to preserve what's inside the function, the variables, so it's no matter you have the same named variable A uh, executed from the command window and you have also the same named variable inside the function. So that's the biggest advantage of using uh, functions inside of simple scripts. Okay. Change back. Okay. Next one, we have two lines. X equals two times X plus three and Y equals two times X plus three. So let's suppose that we have a very large data set. X is some gigabytes in sizes and we want to calculate x with the first line that is it is 2 times x plus 3 so what happens with the memory consumption will it double the memory usage if I execute the first line or not so let's say we have a variable x in our workspace like we have now of course now it's simple scalar uh, sorry vector value so the size is negligible so it's not too much but let's suppose that x is a very very big data more than gigabytes in sizes so what happens if I execute the first line will it double the memory consumption or not no it won't okay because X is a variable is a valid and uh, live variable so it won't double the memory consumption and what happens with the second line if I if I want to calculate Y which is the same 2 times X plus 3 what happens to the memory consumption? Will it create a new variable? Will it allocate a new space in the memory or it will be only a reference to the data X in the workspace? So what happens with the second line? Yeah, so it creates a new variable because now it's Y, so it will copy the memory. So in this case, it will double the memory consumption. So it is called inside MATLAB that it takes in place. Okay, so we have two testing test in place. Okay, so we have this function this test in place as you can see we have a name and we don't have no neither inputs nor outputs so it's a valid function call inside MATLAB you don't need to have any inputs or outputs so we have only a name test in place that's the name of my uh, function and we will create a variable n this will be the size it will about 300 and 18 megabytes I think if I'm right uh, and we will see how how the memory consumption behaves so what happens with the memory consumption if we use two different functions first we will call this my func with a single input and so this is here this is my func and later in the code we will call my func in place and this is here and we will see what happens with the memory consumption and to examine better we will set uh, we can set breakpoints here to slow down the process 
Okay. So we can use this debug mode to see what happens with the memory consumption. Okay, so we need to check for the memory consumption. So we have MATLAB here. So it's 549 megabytes, the currently using these sizes of memory. Okay, so we have something in the workspace, so first clear the workspace. Okay, do you use shortcuts inside MATLAB or you just simply type the commands inside the command window? So here you can add the shortcuts which will execute the code you can write here. So you can create a callback, so you can write whatever you can. So if you want to create, so if you want to clear everything or close everything, you need, don't need to write everything again, again, again inside the command window, you can create these shortcuts. So you can join and collect different, uh, different commands inside one shortcut and you can label it, you can name it, and you can put it on your, on your tool strip so you can quickly access and you don't need to write again and again these commands into your command window. So I have this shortcut here, so I can clear, uh, quickly close the windows and clear all the variables from the workspace. Do you use uh, sectioning to divide your code to different sections? Okay, so with this double percentage sign you can break your code into different sections and you can use the, inside the tool strip, you can use the run and advanced button to jump from one section to another section. So only one section will be executed at one time. So it won't execute the whole code from the first line till the last one. And of course you can add any comments if you wish, you can comment things and you can create a help file for your script. Do you use this? Do you create a help or do you know how to add the, thanks, how to add the help file to your script? Have you ever used this functionality? So whatever. Test in place. Okay, so whatever, so whatever, whatever appears here at the first percentage sign that will be inside the documentation in the help file of your script. So you can put your comments there. So if you want to use it later, you can always check what the script was about, and it will appear in a very fancy formatted form. So. You can always create your own help file, your own documentation for your script. So whatever you put here after the first percentage sign with a one space, you can create your own help file. Okay, so here in this section we, can, we will create a variable named n. We will use this built-in run n function to create a new variable x. And... Uh, First we will call this my func function and then in the second part we will call this my func in place function. Okay. And we will jump into this debug mode. Okay. So Okay, so we have this variable called n, and we have this another variable x, and it's 318 megabytes. So previously MATLAB consumed about 320 megabytes less than this currently is using. Okay, so we jump to the next line. So we will call this my func, which is here which is a simple function, so it will create a variable named y, which will be the sign of and some evaluation of x. So this variable x will be used to calculate the variable y.
Okay. Okay, so so we call this new we call this function my func and the memory consumption did not change as you can see. So we can jump to the next part which calls the function my func which is here. You will get all these demo examples and with all the slides so you can use it later okay and where is it okay so we have the new variable y so in the previous function in the first function when we use this my func my func in place here because the input was a variable named x, we created a new, we created this x with the sign of something, so we did not create a new variable. And with the second one, with the second function calling, with this my, sorry, with this my func, we used the same sign evaluation, but we named it as a new variable y. And as you can see, we have a new variable here in the workspace, which is called y. It has, of course, the same size and the memory consumption again is higher with this 318 megabytes so whatever you type here which will change whether you copy the or MATLAB will copy the memory or not okay and yeah and we got an error with this my func x because we type y here so it's not allowed here so you cannot call this my func function with the variable name y so that's why you have this warning message sorry this error message inside uh, inside MATLAB okay and we can we can finish okay so we can oh it's finished okay sorry so we finished our function so that's the difference between different function callings so if you name it in the same way, it won't copy uh, your variable inside the workspace. And if you call in a different approach, in a different way, in this my func, uh, it will copy the, the memory part of your code. OK, and we can set these breakpoints out. We can clear everything out and the memory consumption will jump back to the original one. Okay, so we cleared everything from the memory, from the workspace. So, functions, uh, my func, my func and my func. So if you use this my func in place, so here the same name you use the same name so x equals something some sign of that x variable but in the my func we created a new variable y so it needs to copy is it possible to transfer data not to, uh, by pointers so i can see, I can see. inside fun between functions between function, yes. yeah we not, will use uh, not copy data yeah using pointers like a reference, others, just others. a reference. In, if you use nested functions, you can use that one. So functions inside functions. To create address of the area, to transfer not the data, address, transfer address of this data. Address where, where it is stored inside the memory, you mean address. Like a C. I don't know C, I have never used C. You're welcome. Okay, so next one, memory consumption of different kind of arrays. 
Here, we, in the first line, we create a simple vector with the two element vector, one and two. The next one is a cell array, so you can create with the curly brackets a cell array. And the third one is a structure, so you can create a structure named D. And the question is that what about the memory consumption, at which ki what kind of uh, variable type uses the less memory and what is using the most memory inside MATLAB and what's the reason why it is using more memory than the other ones. So we have a so we have a vector. The first one is a simple vector with two elements. The second one is a cell array. The third one is a structure. So which variable type will use the less memory inside MATLAB? The vector, the cell array or the structure? So which one uses the less memory inside MATLAB. Simple vector, a cell array or, or the structure. So what's the guess? Thanks. Could you repeat? What? Make? The first one. The vector. Okay, here. I'm hollow. Okay, so the first one, so the first one, the vector is using the less one, and the structure will use the most one. So for a vector, so if you create a vector with two elements, with one and two, it will uh, consume 16 bytes of uh, from your memory. It's a regular array. So in the second case, if you create a cell array with these curly brackets, it will use more. It will use 128 bytes. So it stores the same data as the previous one as the vector, but it will also store, it will also contain the cell header. So it needs more space to store that variable inside the workspace. And the last one, if you create a structure like the Z, named Z, uh, it will use more, it will use the most memory from your uh, workspace. So it will store the data, of course, the same data with the elements 1 and 2, and it will store the field name and it will store the field header. So it will use the most memory from your uh, workspace. So let's try out. So we have a simple vector. Uh, okay. So we have this vector with two elements and Then we can create a cell array. Okay, and the last one, it will be a structure. So we can create with the same two elements, but in this case it will create a, it will create a structure. Okay, so we have x, which is a vector, which is, which is 16 bytes, which stores uh, 16 bytes. The next one, y is a cell array. With these curly brackets, you can always create a cell array. And the last one is a structure. It contains x, which is, a, which is the same vector as the previous one, the first one. So in the structure, uses the most memory. So from the memory consumption part, structure uses always the most memory. And the reason that it needs to store uh, not just the data, but the field name and the field header. So that's why it uses more memory than the previous two ones, like the vector and the cell array. Okay, so structures. First, we will create a structure. Uh, S.A, with this built-in random number function. And S.B, with the same sizes. And we will see what happens if we create a new variable which will be as capital new and what happens to the memory consumption if we change one element from that structure the first in the from the first row and from the first column so from element 1 1 we change uh, that number to 17 so what happens with the memory consumption if we create this as new and what happens if we change one element inside this previously created structure so what's the initial guess uh, when we'll copy MATLAB memory? If we create this new variable, 
which will be the same as S, the previously created S, or if we want to change some part of that structure. So first create these two uh, variables. So first we have S.A. Okay. Yeah, so it's more, uh, it uses 72 megabytes, so the memory consumption is up with 72 megabytes. Okay, so we can create S.B in the same size. Okay, so they are inside our structure, so the memory consumption is higher again with 72 megabytes. Okay, and now I want to create it as with this S new variable. Okay, so, so here we have this memory consumption. So what happens if I create this new variable? Will it increase the memory consumption for MATLAB or, or it won't copy the, that part of the memory? So what's the guess? Will it copy that part of the memory or MATLAB won't copy? So it was 1791 megabytes. And it's the same. So in this case, S new is a new structure. But in this case, it's a structure, so it's only a reference to S. So it won't copy the, that part of the memory. So that's why the memory consumption is not higher. So in this case, if you use structures, it is the same. So you don't change anything from S, you just create a new name. So it's only a reference to the previously created structure. So in that case, the memory consumption remains the same. But if you want to change only one element from that structure, let's say you want to change one element to 17, in the previously created S.A. So in this case, it will copy the memory. So the memory consumption is up again with 72 megabytes. So in the first case it's only a reference to the previously created structure S and unless you don't change anything inside that one it won't copy but if you change any, something inside your structure it needs to copy to another to a new variable. So that's why the memory consumption is up again with 72 megabytes. So how it so this is how MATLAB handles structures and what happens if you change variables inside the uh, inside structure. Next usage of structures. Let's suppose we have an image and we want to store that image inside the uh, inside structure. So we have two different approaches. In the first approach we will use uh, red, green, and blue planes to store uh, each value inside this IM1 structure. So the red, the red data will be stored in IM1.red, the green in the green one, and the blue in the blue one. So different colors will be stored in different uh, parts of that IM1 structure. So this is one approach. This is the first way how we will store data from a picture. And the next one, if we store, the next approach is if we store it pixel by pixel. So each pixel will be stored for the different colors, for the red and the green and the blue. And we will see what happens with the memory consumption. So what's the initial guess? Which methodology, which, which part? The first one, if we separate the colors and we store them in three different planes, we'll use less memory or if we use each pixel and store the data for each pixel. So which will use more memory? If we use the second one or if we use this first one? Yeah, the second one. It will use much more memory. So we will use a built-in figure inside MATLAB. Yeah. The image. We store the data. Yeah. Okay. So, so we will store 
this, uh, these uh, data inside this IM1 structure, and the second one we store that in the IM2 structure. Okay, and okay. So first we load this image. Okay. So MATLAB has lots of built-in uh, uh, figures. It has lots of Easter eggs. So what? This is one of them. So this figure will be used to store uh, the data inside into these structures. So in the first one. Okay. So in the first uh, first one, we store red, green, and blue separately into different planes. So this will be stored in IM1. Okay, so we have this variable here, the structure inside our workspace. So this is the first way, and here you can see the memory consumption, with how many data does it need to be stored. And the next one, if we separate into pixel by pixel, and we store the color data for each pixel. So this will be stored in IM2. This will be uh, another structure. So we have this IM2 and uh, here you can see the difference between the two methods. The, the second one uses much more memory than the previous one. So if you store this data for each pixel, the memory consumption will be much higher than if you store the colors separately, but not for each pixel. Okay, tables, which is, it is a quite new uh, variable type inside MATLAB. You can do almost the same with cell arrays inside MATLAB, but it's more uh, flexible and it can be used in a much more efficient way than, than collecting different kinds of data with the cell arrays into a cell type variable. Do you use uh, this table variable type inside MATLAB? So it's quite new. Uh, you can mix different kinds of data. You can mix names, variable types, numeric values. You can create categories inside table variables, which cannot be done with the cell array. So with cell arrays, with cell array types, variables, you cannot create categories. And you can use the same normal functions like uh, merge, sort, max, min, and other functions like you could use in a simple numeric array. So in this table, uh, in this table variable, you can use more than a simple cell array. Okay, so, so one and the most advantageous part, you can create categories inside, inside a table array. So if we look into the code, here you can see that we can create a simple, uh, simple table variable. So first we create the last names. So they are names, so they are uh, created inside this cell array, inside these curly brackets. So we have Smith, Johnson, Williams, Johnson, Brown. We have the ages, they are in the vectors, they are in a vector. Uh, we have the height and the weight of these uh, people and we have the blood pressures for each person and we can create from these different kind of values we can create from names and from numeric values a table variable type which will be stored in capital T so the first column will be the last name the second one the age and so on so we have these different uh, named uh, columns Okay, so here we created this new variable type. This is a table variable. So we have the last names, age, and so on. So this is, the, this is almost the same what you can create with a simple cell array. So you can combine different kind of data into, into one single environment. Uh, 
okay you can use the same functions like length and you can create uh, a table from a structure so you can convert between different variable types you can use the same functionality like the who's you can use the same functionality like if you want to sort rows and columns like in a simple cell array you can use the same uh, functionality like the end to display the last element in that vector uh, and you can what you what you cannot do inside the salary type is you can create uh, categories you can create categorical variables so first we load this one okay so these are the categories excellent fair good fair for all the patients so we have these categories how they are feeling themselves so this will be a category and okay so here you can see the main advantage of using tables that you can combine different kind of variables inside one inside one uh, environment and from this variable which contains the categories you can create with this new function categorical categorical variable type so we have these categories excellent fair good and poor so we have four different categories and you can use this like um, like in any other sorting or indexing logical indexing option in the salary you cannot create this one okay and as you can see for all the 100 persons people in the list we have all the categories so this is a new new option inside this table variable okay so here you can see again these are the categories for all the patients inside this variable type and you can use the same function like sum to collect all the variables that equal to good so you can use this logical indexing for this categorical type variable so you can sum all the all the persons who said that they feel themselves uh, their health status as good so you can use this so you can use this categorical variable type inside the table variable type to collect data and it says that 40 out of 100 persons said that they're uh, currently feeling good so this categorical array type inside this table environment is a, is a new one which is more which is more flexible compared to the cell array it has all the functionality like a simple cell array and uh, it's more convenient to use and to search and to uh, use the same functions like sum sort row and so on inside a simple salary okay so this was some part how you can use the and what happens when MATLAB copies or not the memory how you you can use structures and the next one is different kinds of functions Okay, so Okay, so okay so we have several functions inside MATLAB um, functions defined in separate files sub functions inline functions anonymous functions nested functions so besides these regular functions 
you can use several type of functions. Uh, do you use these functions like nested functions or anonymous functions or or you use only the regular functions? What kind of functions do you use inside MATLAB? So you can create functions inside functions. You can combine any kind of functions with any other kind of functions. So there is no restriction. So in a simple script and a simple function, you can create several functions. You can combine regular functions with, uh, with nested functions. And uh, and with sub functions as well. Okay. Okay, so so this first function was a simple regular function. It accepted in this way three inputs and it created one output which was y so whatever it's on the left side you need to create uh, inside your script so you need to write down what should be there on the left hand side so besides regular functions you can create uh, anonymous functions uh, it? have you ever used anonymous functions inside MATLAB or have you ever created anonymous functions like so anonymous functions means it is not stored in a file so this foo.m this function is stored in a file which is called foo.m so you can create anonymous functions which is not stored in a file like ask urt and let's say it will be uh, x space x to the power of 2 so this is, a, this is an anonymous function it, because it won't be stored in a file. So it starts with the at, at sign and in the parentheses you need to define that how many inputs does this function accept. Here in this case it accepts only one input which is x and this sqrt means that this, uh, it will put your number, your variable to the power of 2, so whatever you enter here. So this will be a function handle. So here in the workspace we have this uh, so we have this sqrt and you can see it's a, come on, it's a function handle. It's an anonymous function and the variable type, the class is a function handle. And you can use it as a regular function but it's not stored in a file. As you can see, I have never saved this file. But in a regular function like this one, if we created this first one, this is a regular function, it is stored in this file. So you need to save this into a file. But these anonymous functions uh, are not stored in any file. Okay, and we can use this as a simple function. So let's say I want to calculate A, which will be sqrt so I will call this function to 5 let's say okay so sqrt is an anonymous function which will execute this code and I it accepts only one input and I used 5 as the input so the result is 5 times 5 which is 25 so you can use these anonymous functions uh, besides uh, the regular functions you can use this for further uh, calculations, you can use it for integration, for example. So you can integrate from 0 to 1 this function. Oh, sorry. SQRT. Okay, so this will be the result of this integral function. So you can use for any other purposes, not just simple calculations. Okay. you don't need to store anywhere and you can hard code variables inside that function and it cannot be overwritten for example so if you have a if you have a larger expression like like this one with different variables uh, and of course it has more advantages but the first one is that it's not stored anywhere 
it's just a function handle that's it's only inside your workspace so let's say we have this parabola here it accepts one input which is x so this is the formula for this parabola a times x to the power of 2 plus b times x plus c and here we have a b and c so a is 1.3 b is 0.2 and c is 30 and I will use this parabola for an anonymous function so this will be another function handle inside my workspace so it's here and if I want to okay so we have a b sorry so we have a b c inside the workspace these are the three numbers that I written in the command window and you can clear these variables from your workspace okay so now I have only these two function handles and that queue which I previously entered and I can uh, calculate this value I can use this function handle parabola let's say that the input should be let's say it's 2 so it can calculate with the input 2 but the variables a b and c are not in the workspace anymore because I cleared them but when you enter these three variables a b and c and you execute the code that parabola which will be a function handle with one single input and with three variables a b and c so these numbers are hard coded into this function handle so you cannot delete it so if you want to change this one you need to execute the code again so this is what you cannot do with the simple function for example so you can hard code the variables inside your function one thing and the second one it's not stored anywhere it's only in your workspace so it's not stored it's not saved in a file so that's that's two differences between a, between a regular function and a function handle if you want to change the numbers if you want to change the value of values of ABC you need to you need to execute the code again so you can add ABC you can add different values and now this parabola which is this which has the same formula will be changed regarding to these three new variables so now it has a new value you can use uh, which is quite the same with the regular function anonymous functions can be called with no inputs it can be done with simple regular functions so it's the same so so if we have a, a function handle called t which will be a date string uh, it will display the current date so the parenthesis is empty so it's not necessary to call a function handle with any inputs it works in the same way like a regular function with a regular function you can do the same you don't need to have any inputs you can create uh, you can create uh, function handles with uh, multiple inputs for example with two inputs with x and y so this is another function handle which is stored inside the workspace and you can use this for further calculations uh, let's add some value to x and y and let's say that the z will be the my function of x and y okay so it's 111 and we can use these x and y's for for other functions so let's say let's say n grid is a built-in function it will create uh, a grid with this x and y values and it will be stored this x and y will be stored in this vector so I have two values inside this one okay so I have x and y here 
So it created a grid with this migrate function, which is a function handler in these sizes from pi to 2 pi. And now because these variables x and y, they are in the workspace, so we have these variables inside the workspace, I can use it for any other purposes like to use inside this mesh function. So I create a new variable called z with this x and y variables with the sine and the cosine of those variables and I use these variables as an input for this built-in function mesh inside MATLAB. So the outputs of these so the outputs of these uh, function handles can be used as simple inputs for, for example, for built-in built MATLAB functions. So that's another, that's another usage of uh, anonymous functions. And you can create arrays. You can concatenate different functions into one environment. Let's say I want to join three different functions inside one variable called f. So I have, I have this first function, I have the second one, and this is the third one. So I can join different values uh, to different, inside one variable. So this will be stored in F, which is now in our workspace. So it contains three different functions and uh, I can use them for any other purposes. I can calculate them with different inputs. So let's say x is 1, y is 10, and the first function from the variable f uh, will be called with x, the second one will be called with y, which is 10, and the third one will be called with the two variables x and y and all the three functions will be calculated inside this inside this uh, uh, function handle. So this is how anonymous functions can be used on top of regular functions. Okay. Okay, so you can create uh, regular functions like this one. You can create uh, function handles like like this one. Uh, you can create uh, sub functions like this one. So you have this function. It accepts one input x, and it will create it will create two outputs y and f h. And here you can see that fh is a, is a function handle. It's an anonymous function. It's not stored anywhere. So you can combine different kind of functions into one file. So here we have the main function, which is named fquiz4. So we have, so we have fh inside this main function, which is a function handle, which is called makeline and makeline accept this a, b, x, a, and b, and it will calculate y, so the output will be y, which is a times x plus b. So it's another example of different usage of functions. So you can combine regular functions with these functions. So we can call this function with x. So let's say f quiz 4 with, uh, let's say, 4. Okay, so it accepted 4 as an input, so x is stored as a number of 4, a is 3, b is 5, and uh, 
So it created a new variable y, which is a times x, which means 12 plus b. So 12 plus 5 means 17. So this is how it works. So you can combine this f h, this function inside another function. Of course, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So this second one, this make line, can access these variables. You, if you want, you can close the functions with an end. It's not compulsory. So uh, here the two ends are missing. So if you wish and if to, if it looks better, you can close the functions with an end statement. But uh, it's optional. Okay. So these are the sub functions. Next one is. Uh, Okay, f quiz five. Okay. So here we stated that a is three, b is five. Y equals make line with x a b. Here we have a is three, b is five. Y is make line x. And here it accepts one input as an x. And here we have a new variable a, which is 5. So let's see what happens, what's the difference between the two files. So here it was a simple sub function. And here we have a nested function, so it's second one, this make line function is inside this fqs5 function, so it's contained inside that one, so it's a nested function, but here in the previous one, in this fqs4, it's only a sub function, so it's below, it's as you can see with these lines, with these marks, so it's not contained, this second one, this make line, is not contained inside the main function, so they are only sub functions, so you can combine any other functions in one file, but you can put the second function inside the main function. As you can see, it is closed into the main function. So here in this case, in the second example, this is a nested function. So you can call this function with the name fquiz5. It will accept a new it will accept an input, one input let's say use this 4 but in this new variable sorry in this new function 5 so the input will be 4 a is 3 b is 5 and now we call the second function which will calculate y corresponding to a times x plus b okay okay so a times x, so it will use this a, not this one. Here we uh, used a as 3b is 5, so whatever you type here will be used in this function because it's not fully contained inside the main function, it's only a sub function. But here in the second example, this make line function is inside the main function, this f is 5, so x is x, what I uh, entered here in the command window, which is 4, 4 times a, so a is 5, instead of 3. So inside this function, we have its own workspace. So a is overwritten to 5, so 5 times 4 is 20, plus 5 is 25. So that's the main difference between this one, which is a sub-function, and this one which is a nested function so this is another function type and how you can store and handle data and uh, copy data between different functions okay
okay so f3 6 so it accepts two inputs a and b and we have a function handle here fh uh, which is the output and the output will be this make line function which says that a times x plus b which will it will be used for that one So let's say f quiz, what is f quiz 6? Let's calculate with 3 and 5. Okay. So the output is fh. The output is a make, at make line, so it's an anonymous function. It's a nested, sorry, it's a function handle. So the answer is f quiz 6 slash main line, make line. So it's a, it's a function handle. And okay, it's A and B, it's not there. Okay, so it's three and five, and we can change it to oh, sorry, let's give a name for that one function handle one. Let's name it to use it later. FH, FH one is FQV six with three and five. Okay, so I have this in the workspace, FH1. Okay, and uh, I can use with different values. Oops, 30. So I have a new FH2. Uh, which has the same value so inside oh sorry okay so in this case so in this case uh, whatever you type here which will be stored inside your function handle so you can use these functionalities so it can be the output can be a function handle as well so you can use this fh uh, as an output which is a function handle and you can use for this one a simple input and it will calculate uh, the y variable y so a and b are stored inside this fq6 so whatever you type here will be preserved for this function handle Okay. Okay. So besides these regular functions, you can use the sub functions like this. So this was the regular function, which is the most familiar for most of you. So you can use these. You can use these sub functions or you can use these uh, nested functions or you can create a function handle as an output inside inside the function so you have several ways for combining these different kind of functions so there is no limitation what can be combined with with any other functions Okay. Okay. So, do you create standalone applications or executables from your code from your functions or or do you use only the report generator to share the script the solutions of your code to your colleagues or in the, inside your uh, corporation? So do you use the compiler? Do you use the standalone app creation? So if you want to create, mostly you create functions. And if you want to share the solution 
inside your inside the university, inside the corporation or outside, you can create standalone applications. You can create an app that can be that can be installed for users who are using MATLAB. So you can compile your uh, function into an app and it can be installed inside MATLAB and it will it will pop up inside your tool strip in the apps tool strip or so for this sense the user need a, the user needs a valid MATLAB but in other way you can create a standalone application for what for for running the standalone application the user only needs the MATLAB the MATLAB compiler runtime which is free so it can be used anywhere on any computer without MATLAB only in this uh, runtime environment is needed and with the compiler you can create from functions you can create a standalone application so if you use guide uh, which is built inside MATLAB so you can create a graphical user interface inside MATLAB you can compile your function you can compile your GUI to a standalone application you can start with a blank canvas without any buttons you can start with some basic control buttons like radio buttons or text inputs or static text labels you can create axes with menus and you can create dialog boxes so you can use this you can use this guide to create to create a graphical user interface. In this case I have a one simple uh, plot window which will generate a simple plot if I press this tryout button. For this data what you can see here is stored inside a figure, inside a figure file which is created by MATLAB so it is generated by MATLAB so so this is the code so this is what generated by MATLAB so what you see here inside the graphical user interface this one this is represented by this function only functions can be compiled to standalone applications so whatever you create inside your graphical window it will create a line of code for displaying correctly and what I used is just a simple line of code that I created data. I used this peaks, this built-in function, this built-in peaks function inside MATLAB. So it creates a, a 2D numeric array which will be used for plotting purposes. And I have only one button. So every button, every text input, every radio button, every drop-down menu has a callback. So here I have this push button callback and after I can set whatever function I want to use I can write the code whatever I want to use I can use the built-in functions I can use my own calculations and here I use only one another built-in function inside MATLAB which is a surf which is a surf function so it will create a 3D plot of this data so from this current data this current data it is generated here so the current data equals the handles.peaks and the handles.peaks is this uh, initial generated data inside the MATLAB workspace so this data set will be used when I press the push button so it will execute the code surf so it will create a 3D plot of this data inside this function which is a simple 2d plot group so if i run this figure it executes it initializes the function inside the matlab and i have this one and only empty figure and i have this one and only push button if I press this button it executes the code which means it will generate the surf plot of this data so now I have this 3D <coughs> plot here so if you want to create a, 
a standalone application, you can use the guide, the built-in guide inside MATLAB to create a graphical user interface. You need to only set what happen, what should happen when you press the button, when you select another data type, and then you have this function. And this function can be used for the compiler to create a standalone application. So if you open up compiler and an application compiler you can create with a simple click a standalone application. As you can see the default is a standalone application and it will search it will search for dependencies. So first you need to select sorry the the main file, the main M file. Okay overwrite and it will automatically detect that what other kind of files, what other kind of functions are needed whether it has dependencies or not and you can set the default icon what should happen when you execute the code you can add the uh, labels, the company, the version, history, whatever you have so here you can see it needs only one file, the figure file, the function which describes how your graphical user interface works and it will create these files so it will create a text file so how others can execute your code and it will create the app itself so with one simple click it will package into a standalone application and for that one you don't need uh, MATLAB only the runtime environment is needed to run and of course, because it's a standalone application, no one will see the code inside your file. So you can hide your code, your solutions. So it's another reason why you can use the compiler to create a standalone application. So it cannot be reverse engineered. <clears throat> Okay, so okay, so I don't need MATLAB for this one. Okay, so I have the application here. And if I run this application, the same window will appear as I created inside MATLAB with guide. And uh, only the runtime environment will be used. Where is it? Okay, so I have the same figure with an empty label and with a simple push button. So if I press this button, the same will happen. What happened inside MATLAB with the created inside guide? So you can create with some simple clicks from a function to a standalone application. And for this one to run this application, only the runtime environment is needed. So. Uh, the user who wants to use this standalone app does not need MATLAB, only that free runtime environment. You can compile your code to a web application, you can create shared libraries, you can create Java libraries, so you can embed your solution to a web page. So you have further applications, not just a standalone application. For simple standalone application, you can use the compiler, or if you want to use the, if you want to create Java applications, .NET applications, uh, you need to use the compiler SDK. Or if you want to create an Excel add-in, you can use the compiler SDK. Or if you want to create a C code, you can use the MATLAB coder. That's that is used for creating a C code from your MATLAB code. To create, sorry? Yeah, with the compiler you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay. Is it possible just to generate pictures? I mean, if we if we actually got all the data and just the visualization, I mean, once it is defined, I mean, can you start it? Like the output, how would they think? You can save in several forms. You can save to dot .mat to yeah, save I mean, the workspace file. The yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can save in PDF or JPEG or, or you can save in a vector format or a bitmap format. 
it's up to you. Can you do like a routing? Like I can send data, you can make some manipulation and then return it to it without any visualization? Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. By default, it just calculates whatever you type. It's just optional if you want to visualize, if you want to create figures. It's just yeah, optional. I mean, of course, it's in the cloud, it can be out. Yeah, sure. That's optional. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Not just hard related to this one or, or anything from the MATLAB space or from simulating part. Okay, so thanks for your time. That was my part. So if you have any questions, you can use the evaluation form to fill in. And you can leave your comments there. And if you have any other questions, you can use that yeah, one or you can use that. So you have another relation for this field. I forgot to tell you. I, I told that they are not the same. So just this thing can leave it on the table. Okay, so there's some music tracks here. And uh, you will send them to me as your email addresses. So I presented my videos, but it was also the coordinates. Don't you waste a dollar or something? Yeah, sure. Yeah.